Hello. It's one of these videos that I'm <laughs> not too sure about making. I kind of make one of maybe I'm just addicted to making videos, but I kind of want to just talk and ramble and just eventually find that the things I want to say get off my chest. But before you turn off, um, I just want to explain something quick in a nutshell. Um, over the last five years that I've been meditating, one of the prominent things that has come up about when it's not working. Um, initially, the main stumbling block I had was um, pain in the feet, severe hot per burning pain so that I had to stop meditating. So that what that was happening for quite a while and I tried to work out lots of ways of of uh, revealing it, relieving it. And sometimes something would work and I would it would move up this whatever it was would move up and into my chest area of the heart and then it would be like a lovely feeling. Um, I kind of conquered that. Um, I understood that I was resisting a deeper feeling. Okay, so I understood that. I didn't have to know what it was all about intellectually. I just had to know that I'm resisting a deeper feeling and if I was in the right sort of state, I would then be able to bring that feeling in deeper, sometimes going into the heart and it transferring or doing something. Um, so I've, I've moved on a bit since then and usually where I get stuck now is a pressure in the back. But it's just, if I resist, if I start resisting that, that can then go back into a pain in the feet. So it's weird. So sort of pain, hot burning pain in the feet then goes to pressure in the back if, if you're not fully letting it go. And um, maybe um, meditating with my eyes open has delayed me a bit, I don't know, but then again maybe it was necessary. So anyway, but now what I've, when I then don't resist that pressure in the back. My whole awareness becomes a bit fuzzy. It changes. And I think when I had my eyes closed, that was the point where it stopped being the back of my eyelids and started being like a like a space in front of me or and around me. So then once you're doing that, and you, you can't do that for very long if you're not doing it with love. You, the, 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 the bill of love remaining in you will get, I don't know, will be being used up and you will soon need to either get some love from God or the one love who is yours and mine best friend. So that was the, like the one bit of this video that was sort of supposed to be clear and concise. Because <laughs> I thought that was important to get down. Right, earlier I was thinking, it does seem to me that I've got six or seven people that will at least look at my videos and I don't know, there's... <laughs> I don't know, it might be, see there might be one person who watches every, listens to everything, or two. Judged on, you know, I can see how much time has been spent on each video. Like, I'm talking about the long ones, I think the short ones do get watched and listened to, to the end, but... It might be that no one watches the long ones beyond about 20 minutes. 
and that those three or six or seven people who seem to I always get that you know at least that many views just watch a few minutes and uh, each they all watch a few minutes each or whatever it'd be interesting to know that <laughs> you know I got a 20 minute limit and after that they, they, they ain't got nothing the man has David, I, I like what you said earlier. Listen to a video of his today. You know, don't care what people think. You know, that's part of their power. The, <coughs> the, the anti ones. Is that we care what, you know, we, we do care too much about what pe pe other people think. And, it, and it's stupid. You should just do something like. I put this sort of poem up on Facebook earlier, poem, and it's pretty bizarre. Girl, run. I'm sorry for blocking your way. I didn't like girls running, question mark. I didn't know you cared so much about what I thought. Girl, run. So, you know, that obviously sounds really like, what the fuck? So I was, I was thinking, oh, I sh you know, I shouldn't because people are going to think, what the fuck? And I thought, just do it. And that all came from um, me thinking, oh, you know, something happens in meditation. Should I write it down? Should I make a note of it? Should I make a video so that I don't forget? And then I just thought... If it's important, don't need to write it down or anything because if it's important, it will come up again or you won't forget it. And then I just had this little idea to write a few lines. So then I did, you like, you know, because it, it just came. It just came to me. And I might as well say it now, I might, while I'm rambling in front of a video that no one's going to watch. That, um,. Yeah, it was weird. I was meditating, like looking here, there's a window and a door, and the door is dark. And um, I, I rarely get visuals, but last night I thought I saw a spider. But I got this visual of a six year old girl dressed in a school uniform, blue, white socks, sandal, you know, so I like specific running out like just a few steps doo -doo -doo -doo, run and I was like do you know what I mean? I was like, because that's not something that's usual for me, and I was like, what's that? A ghost? you know, and I've just been doing this heart work and Feel, and I was allowing it, and it was working and stuff. So anyway, I've 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 had a few ideas as to what it might be, but it's just ideas, you know. Like I don't mind that, you know. Intellectually figure out what it was. Com but it seemed like some sort of release, like <clears throat> maybe for my soulmate, um, potentially. Or something, I don't know. So, but one can, you know, be positive and just think, oh, maybe something good happened. Uh, and it, you know, it is a bit. <coughs> and actually, after I posted that thing on Facebook, <clears throat> I actually had a little, little tear because there was just something about. Um, you know, this thing in, like, I, I kind of do remember, like, if a girl was running, I'd probably done it at least once, if not, you know, a few times, like, get in their way just to annoy them. And I certainly can remember, you know, other boys doing that as well. So it's, it just does seem quite sort of, you know, uh, what would the word be? Allegoric or, ana what's the word? And that, analogical <laughs> analogy type thing uh, for how women and men have been for the last few thousand years you know like 
the man, in a sense, wants to rein the woman in and uh, keep her, you know, keep her in, in, in check and stuff like that. And sort of... So, that poet girl run, you know, is that, is that something in me that I had, like, still in me that wasn't resolved with women that I had this sort of thing in me where I would want to restrict a woman. And I, I've certainly had times like that um, where if I've, you know, been in, it's, you know, not involved, I don't mean like that, but, you know, if I've even met a good looking girl or whatever, you know, that I would care about what happens to her. You know, be like a, you know, or, you know, and try and give them advice or, you know, just want them not to go astray sort of thing, you know, and have this slight sort of controlling thing. Um, you know, which is, yeah, why is that, why was that there? So, you know, have I just released that possibly? Maybe. Oh, and... Okay, moving on. <laughs> sort of similar subject, but... As it is the same sort of subject, but different aspect. The women and men thing. I'm so right. Sorry to boast, but... I am right about this men being this you know simple white light and women being this sort of rainbow streak like the way we it, the way we interact with our feelings and everything else and i just i was just hearing about a, a woman explaining how she heard about the death of mugabe and you know she's and she was talking about the plethora of emotions that she was feeling and stuff and that they get you know still today's one day it's a half a day away and that she's still sort of dealing with it and I sort of had this picture of women you know when they when they get something that's sort of shocking to them you know they have learned that they need time to feel all the elements of it whereas a, a man will just feel it and pretty much you know he's already felt it and that's it let's um you know my mind up on that what next sort of thing whereas you know so it is like, like women have got that that we are so different you know the deeper you go the more different we are well, right and left plus and minus you know we are we are in that uh, symbiotics Yeah, truth's coming out. The truth just keeps on coming up. You know, reality bubble, isn't it? Like a bubble. Like you can you can believe <clears throat> you know, what you believe will affect your life. But it won't affect what the actual truth is underneath everything. It will affect what you believe is the truth for that time while you believe it. And it may seem real to you as you go on that belief strain. But eventually, you know, the truth that's underneath the truth is going to keep sending things up. And, you know, it's going to keep coming at you, the truth. And you will refine your belief based on what the truths are coming up. And sometimes the truth will come up and burst your bubble and you'll go, you know, you'll, you, you know, you can then carry on in denial, which, which doesn't usually pay off, does it, you know? 
like in my life when I've come across times when I've you know it's because I've found something new that has replaced what I believed before so I'm happy because I've found something new you know something that I feel is more truthful at that time and I think we're always progressing zig zig zag way but you know I'm not I do think, oh my god, you know, I believed that, that was silly and, um, but I'm not unhappy about it, it's just I'm happy now to be on a better path, it's, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Um, this is probably the bit of the videos where people turn off. Understandably, I mean, if I'm just going to sit here and say nothing. Nails are too long for the guitar. I like singing in the bath because it's steamy, it's really good for the voice and the echoiness. I should do record songs in the bath <laughs> or the singing bit anyway. So now pressure is in my back and if I just be all gentle, soft and have love with me. And when the vision goes a bit blurry it seems like a the precious it, it seems to move it's it is a bit like it's not exactly like that tarot or thing and and it's not always the same it's like can't you can never anticipate really because quite often when it's blocked it's because it's it's a slightly new feeling that you haven't had before like earlier um, when I was allow when I was allowing it to go, I got a really warm sensation on my ribs, like a, just a spot, you know, as big as a fist, like on my left ribs, really warm, nice, nice warm feeling. So it turned from that pressure into that. So then I so then I knew well that's something that hasn't happened before. So that's something, that's something new. So I couldn't have anticipated, oh, there's going to be a warm area on my, on my ribs. And by the way, when you have love with you, you know, love, I haven't always been able to just have love with me. God showed me to love. Mother and father, father mainly, perhaps in that situation, guided me, showed me to love. That was back two years ago I think 
and um, then you know being with love love wouldn't tolerate me in a sense exactly as I was or not you know tolerate me right I could be with love for a bit and I recognized it and then you know there were things I needed to sort out to allow me to be with love more comfortably and that was the same with mother and father God as well and you know being able to be with father comfortably is a pretty recent thing for me I mean there are different levels so but there was quite a major level that I got to in around, I think it was spring, April, March, May, so I think one of them. You know, and all the time, I guess, um, yeah, it's a, it's a gradual thing because it's never like just done and finished. And this is what I've been doing for the last five, what, well, four years, I suppose, because the first year was was more me sort of realising things, understanding things to be able to do anything. Then there was three years of pretty intense stuff like this. And um, at the moment it's a bit, it hasn't been loads, it's a bit now and again, it's a bit, is this doing anything? You know, well if I don't do anything for a while, you know, how does that go? Um, but I seem to want to keep doing it and there seems to be still more to do. And there was a while where there, I didn't feel like there was any more to do, you know, I would sit and meditate and there wasn't anything coming and that's... That happens now and then. That has happened now and then. Because, you know, you could think, oh, you know, if, if this happens to you, and you think, oh, every time I sit down, meditate, I get this, I get the same pain, you know. So you sort of, you just, you could either worry about it and think, oh my god, I must have something wrong with me, I better go to the doctor. Or you might just think, oh, I can't bother to do this anymore, you know, it's a waste of time, I might as well be getting on with something. So, the resistance can feel very familiar, and it probably is a familiar, you know, it's a familiar resistance, it's, are you resisting this again? You know, so you get the same sort of feeling. But once you actually allow it to go, I'd say it's never the same twice. Though sometimes it might just be about checking in, you know. Maybe sometimes I haven't checked in with Mother God or Father God or the One Love or the Soulmate, you know, and there's... So it'll never be exactly the same twice because there'll always be some information with it. It'll never just be empty. So the information will always be different. Slightly different. You know, you're always in the now, right? But what's also present in the now is your past and future. And so every second that goes by, that changes. 
So the now is always different. <laughs> I don't know why we call it meditation, I'm not exactly sure meditation, what it means. But my form of meditation is the simplest form of meditation you can think of. You sit up and allow. And you don't do anything else, you don't move. Have an itch on your face, don't scratch it, just allow it. Cramp. Cramp's quite hard to allow. <coughs> Cramp can be a weird one. I cramped last night. And one point I got up and I don't get cramped very often. I was doing quite a lot of sport yesterday. And usually my resolve is salt. And then I was lying there and I thought, well, what about if I didn't have any salt? What would I do then? I don't really want to have to rely on salt so I I did get up and walk one bit off and then the next I lay in bed and I just relax and sort of it didn't, it didn't then get too bad and I was able to get over it uh, but yes so <laughs> back to the point allow talking as if the whole world should hear this and they should the whole world should hear this. The art of meditation. Sit up. That's so you don't go to sleep. And also when you're sitting up, God the Father is directly above and God Mother is directly beneath. You'll learn that once you start to connect with your heart which you could do as a child. So this isn't something you've never done before. You've done this. When you were a little baby, you were totally content and you could feel mother and father God. So anyway, you want to get back to that state of energy and happiness you can, it's possible. So you sit down, straight back, it's good for your posture. So if nothing else, you're doing something which is good for your posture. And it's good it's good for your muscles. I haven't felt like I needed a massage. Remember the first five bits of your spine are fused together. You can't bend them there. Where are they? <laughs> anyway. So anyway, sit up. Do nothing. Close your eyes if you want. I found that was easier in the beginning because it could be more distracted. But anyway, I open my eyes now because... Anyway. So, either way, hands... I like the hands together. And just allow. As simple as it could be. And you'll see what happens. And if you can manage about 15 minutes something will happen. And you can um, use your... What you should be focusing on really is your heart. So what sort of things come from your heart? Desires, things you want. Okay, say you want a cup of tea or a fag or a biscuit. Why do I want that? What do I... What is it I want? And you can sort of feel that desire. You know? And, and just feel the feeling. And that's the sort of stuff that comes from the heart. And also how you feel about other people that you love or hate. How do you feel about them? How do you feel about God? 
Now here is where your beliefs can confuse you. And if there's any fear, it means you have an error in what you believe. Because the truth is wonderful. And your heart knows that. So your heart knows stuff instinctively. And your heart is so strong. You know, you're not you're much older than you think. You've been nurtured and you've been growing for a long time. That is the real you. And just feeling. Feel what comes. Allow it. Allow all of it to go to the heart. And do it with love. You on your own, you know, you're not, you're not, you are something, right? You are a unique something, you. That's truth, you know. Love is the one love that's within us all, including our creator, mother and father. But I'm not you and you're not me. And... Whatever you think today, you're going to go to sleep at some point and you're going to wake up and it's a new day and you're here on earth and it's in this body, you know, you didn't, you're here. And this world is physical. I mean, there's matrix and stuff like that. And on one level, yes, there are electrons spinning around protons and they're not really here because they're only there half the time. But, you know, you wake up in the morning and here you are. <laughs> We're in God. We're in God. We're in our mother and father. And mother and father made it, so it don't change. That floor is staying there. I'm not going to suddenly start falling through the floor. So it is real. It's not fake. It's not a hologram. It's, it's real, but it's not all there is. There is also other dimensions here which you can because you are a multi-dimensional thing. So you are capable of feeling things from the other dimensions, seeing things from the other dimensions. And there are nine, three sets of three. Three dimension, up, down, depth, and there are three of them. And there's also truth and time, which sit either side. And you are capable of feeling these others. And the top dimension is the emotional one. That's what I'm talking about, the feelings. The dream one, the spirit one, that's, that's the middle one. That's kind of like equal to this one. The top dimension is the emotional one. So if you can deal in, in that one, which during meditation is and allowing those feelings is what's going on, that will manifest the results in the other dimensions. So it will pay off. And it's why when we try and just fix things in the physical and we try and ignore what we're feeling from that emotional dimension and our dreams, the other dimension, you know, and we try and shut those off and just fix things in the physical, even though everything in the physical can seem absolutely perfect and absolutely fine, you still got problems that eventually you cannot deny they they surface into your life
and fuck things up. <laughs> so by tackling the things on the emotional level, things will just sort themselves out on the others. And that's truth. You know, there's a lot of criticism about New Age stuff, and they're, they're correct to criticise it because, you know, there are going to be errors in the New Age stuff, just as there are errors in the Old Age stuff. You know, everyone needs to know the truth for themselves. But there's a lot of good things coming out and people are understanding and it really is changing, it's, it is definitely happening. So I'm going to carry on doing my bit, because you never know. Well, you know, like Gandhi said, um, whatever you do will be insignificant, but it's very important that you do it. And he was a wise man. I liked him. Good old Gandhi. Those Indians. <laughs> Sorry. Generalise. All people. Everybody out there. All doing our bit. Ciao for now. I haven't gone yet. <coughs> Cause I'm on the rock. And then I checked the stock. I had to run like a fugitive. To save the life I live. I'm gonna be iron. Like a lion. And Zion, Iron Lion Zion, I'm on the run, but I ain't got no gun, I had to run like a fugitive, to save the life I live, I'm gonna be Iron, like a lion, and Zion. Iron, like a lion, and Zion, Iron, Lion, Zion, bear in the bath.